Hi, welcome back everybody. Um, as you can tell, I've changed my shooting location again because I'm very indecisive and I'm just trying out new places to see what works best, but I think just by going off, you know, some photos and stuff of this setup and what I'm doing, I think this is, I think this is it. I think this is a winner. This is one I like the most. So I might decorate the better a little bit differently as time goes on, but we'll see how it is. Um, yeah, so today I'm going to be talking about a book. And it's a very, it's a very good book. I'm going to explain why it's a very good book. And I hope you enjoy it. So, John Marshall's 1988 book, The Journey, was a turning point in my adolescence. For those of you who don't know this book, this is the cover. It's a small book, but it's an awesome book. Um, I first read it when I was about 14, and after rereading it last night for the first time in nearly five years, holy shit, I can say that so much of who I am now when it comes to how I think and how I look at the world is a result of this book. The premise of the story is a really simple one. Um... So it's about a 14-year-old boy called Argus who leaves home on a sort of like a rite of passage to become a man. Um, he leaves his small hometown in the Random Valley. I'm not saying it, like that's what it's called. It's called Random. It's a battle called Random. And he goes off to explore the wild world that exists beyond his borders and to, to find his own stories. A very important part of this book is the seven stories he must collect, which are, very, which are the, at the very end of the book. But I'm not going to talk about them today. I really want to talk about a very consistent and very powerful message that is underlying the entire book and that is that nothing is out of seams and everything is so much more complex than what might appear on first on first glance. Now, this idea carries throughout this enti the entirety of the book and it's laid out quite simply pretty much straight away within the first three pages. So Argus is reading this small book given to him by his father that is meant to lay the ground rules for this journey that he's about to undertake. It goes, uh, the book warned him that nothing was simple, everything was complex. Whether it be a leaf, a human, an idea, a word, even the statement that nothing was simple was too simple, and probably not wholly true. Straight away, we're given a taste of what Argus's journey is going to be like. We're told that everything from this point on should not be taken on face value, and nothing is quite as it seems. Then goes on to say, the book also warned him that there were no absolutes. Such extreme terms as good and evil, true and false, the light and dead, might be convenient words, but they should only be seen as indications, not definitions. A really interesting thing about this short passage is that all three of those pairings, good and evil, true and false and alive and dead, are all challenged directly at one point or another in this book. But I think one of the three, the examination of good and bad, is the one I find most interesting. On page 105, Argus is coming to the end of the long, one of the longest parts of his journey. For almost half of the book, from page about... Uh, I don't know, probably at chapter 4, chapter 5, sorry, almost... Yeah, to about page 100 and 110. So it's a good. It's about that much of the book. And keep in mind, this isn't a very big book. So almost half of this book is spent in this one place, and it's working as a stringer for a traveling carnival. All right. So he finds employment out in a traveling circus, which enables him to both work and also to continue on his journey in a way that that works. So there are several characters in this carnival that are pivotal to Ark, Argus's character arc. Well, what I want to talk about here is Mayon. Mayan is a really important character. He's one of the leaders of the carnival, but he also functions as sort of a father figure to Argus during their time together. As Argus is leaving the carnival for good, ready to start the journey back home, it's Mayan who accompanies him to the camp's limits. The conversation they have goes as follows. It's been good, Argus said, suddenly feeling shy. They're good people. They're a mixture of good and bad, like everyone else, Argus answered him with a smile. But there's one thing you still haven't figured out about them. What's that? Argus asked in surprise. Mayan shrugged. They're all you. All a different part of you. Now this statement hits me hard personally, both in relation to the story, but also my own personal experience. Firstly, the statement Mayan makes about everyone being a mixture of good and bad is something that is hinted at throughout this entire story. Almost with every character, everyone that Argus encounters, whilst not fleshed out completely, is given their own distinct story. They are easily discernible from each other, and part of that is due to what is shared about each character's moral compass. Take the character of Ruth, for example. Ruth is another member of the carnival and part of the freak show attraction, her act being the fat lady. There is, there is a scene describing all the workers chatting around a fire eating dinner. And Ruth is telling everyone about a man she was once married to, and how she literally threw him out of the house because he didn't want the cat out. He kicked and struggled, but wasn't having any. I threw him out the door, down the steps, and that was it. After I closed the door on him, I never saw him again. The conversation before and after she said this was all very relaxed and happy, and no one seemed to think too deeply into the comment, but raises the question though. Uh, does this, in part, make Ruth a bad person? Essentially banishing someone for whom she clearly cared about and loved enough to marry for something as trivial as not wanting to put the cat out. Doesn't seem like something a good person would do. Then again, Ruth is shown to be a very loving and friendly person the rest of the time. 
She's one of the first people to make friends with Argus when he joins the carnival, and she's very emotional when he finally leaves. But as Mayan said, she's a mixture of good and bad. Everyone is. However, it's the next part of this final conversation with Argus that fascinates me the most. They're all you. All the different parts of you. Now to me, this has two meanings. One being that it's a comparison. Mayan is saying that there are Argus in the way that he too is a mixture of good and bad. It's a simple meaning, but one that still has some level of substance. But the more important meaning is that everyone in the carnival, everyone who Marcus has met, is related to, knows or knows well, has played some role in shaping him to who he is today. That each of them has left their mark on him and his life in a way that's neither tangible nor easily identifiable. Some characters leave bigger marks on Argus's character, characters such as Mayon and Tamora, another stringer who Argus becomes romantically involved with whilst they travel together in the carnival. Both have profound impacts on his character, but if I bet you were to ask Argus years later why he thinks a certain way about something, it's very unlikely to be able to trace it back to the exact thing they said or that they did that led him to this conclusion. He probably remember it had something to do with them, and that would be it. He probably remembered it had something to do with them, but that would be it. I think that it's this idea that resonates so deeply with me when I read this book. I myself took a similar journey last year. I set myself guidelines and rules for the trip that I made sure to stick to. Rules that, now that I've reread this book, I realise are so similar to Argus's, Argus's own rules. And this idea of me being in part all the people I've met, while still being my own person, makes so much sense to me. I can't pin down the exact moment they made me the way that they did, but I know I'd like to live life a little bit more boldly from a Canadian I met on an island. To take time to appreciate a hard-earned cup of tea from an old builder I lived with. And I learned to take things slower and appreciate what's around me from an Italian surfer. These are just some small examples, but there are so many people that have influenced who I am today. Just as there were so many people who made Argus who he was. The Journey is by far my, one of my favourite books, and in my opinion one of John Marsden's most underrated. It helped me become who I am today, and it tells a beautifully rich and mature story of a young man as he tries to find both his place and his identity in a world that is not quite as it seems. So, that's just a quick, but, you know, it's a, it's a quick but sort of in-depth look at this book. I want to talk so much more about this than what I could fit into a 10-minute video, and as you can see, just by looking at all these little dog ears there are so many passages and comments and d parts of dialogue in this book that I'd love to explore further on but I, I, I think I've said all I've wanted to say for this video when it comes to that um I just want to say that when I first read this book I was 14 years old probably I was about the same age as Argus is when he's in like in the story like as, as you can see I had this book back in year seven I don't think I read it for another year after that and I think I literally read it that one time, loved it, but never read it again. And I'm not sure why that was, maybe just because, I don't know, you know how sometimes you watch a movie and you are very affected by it, but it's the kind of thing that you watch it once and you feel like that's it. You know, like you don't need to watch it again. Not because it was, not because you didn't enjoy it or anything, just because you don't want to, nothing's going to beat that first experience. But I think rereading it so, you know, after so many years, I knew the story fairly well because it made such an impression on me, but I didn't know the details and it was really those details that I think, you know, that I think really resonated with me as I am today. Um, and to be honest, I don't know where I would be if I hadn't read this book. I don't know what kind of person I would be because there is so much in this book that reflects who I am today as a person. And, yeah, um... And I know this is a bit of a stretch, but um, John Marsden, if for whatever reason you're watching this random 18-year-old's quick analysis on a book you wrote back in the 80s, I just want to say thank you for writing this, but also for writing the Tomorrow War Began series and writing Checkers and A Prayer for the 21st Century and just everything that you do and just the way you portray young people, I find to be really great. I recently just watched an interview that you did with the ABC, I think it was talking about how when you were, and you mentioned that when you first arrived you hated how most how like most media outlets demonized young people and how you wanted to portray you know portray young people in a way that was a bit more accurate and in better light of them and thank you for that as a young person thank you for that and thank you for creating such an incredible story um i think i'm going to end it on that and just yeah thank you for watching um if you like this video please like and subscribe. I'm going to make more stories like this. I'm going to make more short videos like this. I might even make a second journey 
analysis, maybe looking more in depth at Argus's character or at some of the other metaphors and ideas and themes that are spread throughout this book, because there is a lot in this book, and I love it so much. Um, but I also really want to do an analysis of John Mars another John Marsden book called uh, Prayer for the 21st Century. It's a picture book. It won several Children's Book Awards when it came out a while ago, and even though it was written nearly 20 years ago, so much of it has so much relevance now, and it is a beautiful story. It's it's short as a poem. Actually, I'm not going to say any more about it. I'll, I'll, I'll make another video. I'll go right in depth in it because I do love it. It's like one of the few. It's like the only picture book I bought from it, bought with me when I moved out. But as always, I'm going to leave a link to my Instagram down in the comments, um, as well as to my writing blog if you want to, you know, go check out some of my other stories because I do write myself. Um, go check them out. I promise they're good. I think. <laughs> um, but I'm going to keep making my audio stories as well because I really enjoy doing that. So if you read a particular story and you really want it, me to read it out, if you want to make an, want me to do an audio cover of it, comment it on any of my videos or message me and let me know. And at this point, I'll it just take, it'll just take one person ask me to read one for me to do it. Like I don't have that many stories anyway. So yeah, really appreciate that. And I hope you're all staying safe out there in the wide quarantined world and stuff. Um, and yeah, I hope you're all finding your own ways to cope with how everything is. For me, that's making videos, watching Curtis Connor and Danny Gonzalez videos all day on YouTube and reading incredible books. So, um, yeah, thank you for watching.